Hey friends and welcome to another video. Today we're doing an energy weekly reading for the week of April 24th through the 30th. Uh, there's a lot of interesting things happening this week. Um, the Pisces stellium, a stellium being any time there's like a bunch of planets all together, sort of very close to each other in the sky. That is a stellium. We have, at the start of the week, the moon um, going conjunct with a bunch of these planets. So in order, literally a new planet every day, moon conjunct Mars, that's about the impulsivity of our emotions. Um, moon conjunct Venus then on the 26th could result in an increased sense of empathy, maybe based on um, the actions or the impulses of the previous day, who knows. Uh, the 27th we have the moon conjunct Neptune. Um, Neptune is all about our fantasy and idealizing senses, uh, so this might cause a heightened sense of emotions and idealism about our emotions, yeah? Um, the moon conjunct Jupiter the following day, or same day actually on the 27th, increases our ability to sense the correct thing. So um, finally being able to see something for what it is and then have the power um, to grow that by saying the right thing at the right time or, or whatever the case may be. Uh, Pluto retrograding in Capricorn, oof, let's come back to that one. Um, the same day that the Pluto goes retrograde in Capricorn, we have Mercury um, ingressing to Gemini, ingressing as in moving into. So um, Gemini is the natural ruler of Mercury. So I feel like this is all about communication, um, sharing ideas. There's bound to be a ton of enthusiasm this week um, about ideas or truths. Um, yeah, what else do we have here? Oh boy, the 30th is the moon going conjunct with the sun. I mean, that is a new moon. Um, in other words, it's a new moon eclipse in Taurus. Anytime there's an eclipse, you could just think of that as being like an extreme heightened version of that. I've been talking about Taurus a lot, Taurus North Node, it's now Taurus season. In one sentence, I would describe that as revolutionize your self-care revolutionize the way you structure the things, um, or structure and how you integrate things in your life you care about, okay? We're not done. There's still a couple more things. Uh, Venus conjunct Jupiter, I wrote growth and luck relating to beauty, love again, values, right? Jupiter, the planet of growth, conjunct with Venus. Um, so yeah, um, Understand having a good understanding of what things in our lives um, are ripe for um, investing in or growing. Um, and also Venus conjunct Neptune. Oh boy. The fantasy dreams connecting to a larger sense. Um, to me, that sort of speaks like the, uh, it's like the energy of an idealism of an integrity. So this week might be uh, totally fraught with uh, people coming to an understanding of what it is they feel a lot for, um, where their um, emotions connect them to things uh, they want to manifest in their lives, your life, um, things that, similarly things that you will and will not tolerate. Um, and if this is relating to anywhere where in the past you've had any sense of frustration, um, things could reach um, a breaking point. Um, I wouldn't say in its totality, um, but there is going to be a very pleasant coming around in terms of like the feeling of like turning a new leaf, seeing something for what it is, seeing the interconnectedness of all the things, um, everyone just wanting the same things, you understand? So let's talk about the Pluto retrograde in Capricorn then. Um, Capricorn, the ambitious sign, right? Extremely loyal, um, very work oriented. Uh, Pluto, the sign, the you know Pluto, uh, normally ruled by uh, Scorpio, is the planet of sex, death, transformation. So. To end this, and then we'll get into the reading, I'll say this about the, the Pluto retrograde. We will 
start the unraveling process of how, um, what and how we've been going after things. What things we've been going after and why. What have we been drawn to? Um, the areas in our lives we've been drawn to to create things. I think there's going to be a lot of uh, reassessing. And again, this is, I think this is, it's supportive to have the moon touch all these um, other planets and Venus to also conjunct these, the planets of Jupiter and Neptune. Because I feel like it's really wanting to usher us into this reassessment through the lens of love and care for ourselves and for people around us. Um, but make no mistake, the Pluto retrograde is here to do work, okay? So um, just be aware of that. And sorry, I thought my phone was on silent. Um, that's just something to be aware of. And maybe I'll talk more about that in the future. Uh, but for now, that is the um, energy update. So now we're gonna do our reading to see what wants to come through with that in mind. Yeah, eclipse season starts at the end of this week, as in um, the next full moon in Scorpio, May 15th, if I remember correctly, is also an eclipse. Learn how to step into your worth this week. The ability to see the beauty in things um, cannot be understated. Right, and sometimes we do lose, we lose sight of that um, because we can become frustrated or things are delayed. Gosh, and this is like the time to also bring up that Mercury is going retrograde. Just as soon as it hits Gemini, right, the next month it's going to be in retrograde. So there may be delays, confusion relating to all sorts of things, but I feel like astrologically the work that is entailed is to see, um, to, to connect with the things that you care about um, and to understand why you care about these things and what your purpose is. What are, what are the things you're trying to create in the world? Retrograde Pluto, right? Okay, one more shuffle and let's do it. Confidence is your key to, the, to your success. New moon Leo. So we got fire energy coming right out. Um, is it going to focus? No? How about now? All right, new moon Leo. Confidence is your key to success. Yeah. By understanding that, that which you love and can become confident in it um, by saying, this is true to me. This is what I care about. Accepting your truth, you know, Leo wants to be seen as well, so I feel like there's something here about finally letting people know something. We have the new moon Virgo, All right? Some earth energy dropping in, the time to give rather than take. Yeah, what you're letting people know is your, your intentions of what you are in service to. What is your purpose? As in, what are you in service to? What are you here to do? Have faith in your dreams. Okay, the waxing crescent moon. I feel like this is asking you to go in even deeper, deeper than what you think is possible to reveal truths of what you want to create, things that you're connected to, and um, Maybe it's time to revive an old dream of yours. Because here's the thing. The, you know, I had a whole conversation in my head just now. Good things come to those who wait. Um, no. No. Um, <laughs> in this case, you know, we should not wait for things to change. We create the change. So... Your dreams of what, you know, your life could look like, um, what we want our environment to be, is full of potentialities, potentials to change, for change. But like if we just wait, 
That's not really, um, that's not what's in the cards here. It's sort of saying like, have the confidence to um, have faith in your dreams. Don't let those dreams die. Uh, it's more of a revival. How you're gonna go do it remains to be seen. All right, on the bottom of the deck, we have winter. This is a time for hibernation, uh, building confidence, um, spending time with loved ones, okay? I love that. I love that. And um, given my plans this week, that's exactly what I'll be doing, just not in a winter setting. I'm gonna be on the beach. <laughs> okay, well, and since I saw it, there it is, the Nine of Wands underneath as well. Um, relating to old patterns, right? And perseverance. Um, so start to think about something that you've been really trying to manifest, really trying to take off the ground. Um, something that might be very close. And it seems, it seems backwards, but what I'm getting here is that the thing to take it over the edge is to come back into yourself. Remember why you're doing it. Maybe you'll discover that the thing you've been trying to do, the outcome you've been um, over here agonizing over, feeling left out in the cold over, maybe it's not for you. Or maybe you discover that now more than ever that is exactly what you want and you're gonna go get it. I mean, it could go either way. In any case, confidence is your key to success. Like how do you become more confident in those things? Um, and apply this to your own situation, but how do you make that thing, that event, that outcome, that relationship, have some sort of higher purpose? That's what's here. Yeah, because what we, what we see in front of us is not enough. That's, what, that's the two of wands there, looking at, looking beyond onto greener pastures. Um, also something that has been emotionally um, disappointing, unfulfilling, so we're leaving that behind. That's why we're looking beyond. And then we have Summer, Six of Cups, King of Pentacles. Yeah, you're definitely feeling very powerful about something. Because the King of Pentacles is the highest of the Pentacles. It's about mm, having invested the time, the energy, the resources into the thing. Now you're in a place of power where you can, you can share and be generous um, with those things. And I do see uh, harmony here. Six of Cups is generosity, harmony. Also something about the past here um, and something happening very quickly. There might be a message here, I mean, literally in the summer that comes out. The Four of Pentacles, the Hermit, Virgo, there's Virgo again, and the Page of Cups. Yeah, I, f I feel that sometimes we, um, through our desire for stability and wanting to maintain a certain status quo, and here status quo I don't mean like, because um, there's two sort of status quos going on. It's almost like there's, there's the version here that we're not okay with. Um, but then there's parts of it that we're okay with because it provides our lives some sort of sense of structure or harmony. Like we want revolution, but we don't want to change everything. That's why you're showing up here as a place of, from a place of power by saying, um, that's interesting. I feel like you yourself, you've gotten to a certain place where now you're able to sort of guide others around you. I feel like that's evident in your relationships, but you yourself feel dissatisfied despite having attained some sort of level of either recognition or again, people seeking you out. I feel like you, um, it's not necessarily that you wanna give up what you've created potentially. I feel like you're always going to look um, back on what you have done so far with a bit of fondness. Like there isn't going to be much, you're not clinging to it, although you might be idealizing it. You're 
at the same time sort of saying like, I am ready to move on. And so I feel that tension um, here with that, the idea of, but is it right for me? And am I, am I pursuing this because it's deeply connected to who I am and what I want? Or is it something that's been, you know, something that I created because of my environment as a result of, of reacting to any sort of external force? I feel like something's going to happen. We have the Knight of Swords here in the future position coming under have faith in your dreams. So to me, that's feeling a little bit like... Um, so, um, uh, um, a message coming in that revitalizes an old thought or an old idea or old as in like something that maybe didn't seem practical so it was just sort of like oh yeah that'd be cool that'd be fun or that'd be good um i feel like there's going to be some sort of energy given to this idea of, it's almost like it's just crazy enough that it might work. Um, and possibly what's, what's leading to this is that what is here right now, although on the surface seems okay, stable, stable as in, I'll just say this, um, uh, not reliable, um, predictable. There's a predictable sort ofness to it. Um, when we give in to predictability, you know, what am I trying to say? It feels like a stuckness. Like there's comfort in it, but at the same time, it's like not enough or it's just not okay. So that's the message for this week. Um, how are you from your place of power, your own unique privilege? What are you dissatisfied with and how do you use what you have uh, to become more enlightened um, in the way that you see the world, the way that you connect with yourself on a higher level, the way that you share your generosity with others? There is like this awakening, this reawakening um, because I, I see here that, that um, if this is resonating for you, you've done, you've done a lot to sort of keep the peace and you've like done everything you can to reach a, a stable, reliable point in life for yourself. And again, it's, it's sort of that energy, but it's also sort of like a predictableness. You, like, we all want that. We all want to feel like we're in control. That's very human of us. But something here is gonna change very quickly that, that I feel like will give new life and literally give legs to something that had been previously um, just sort of shut away for either being too far-fetched or um, too far-fetched or, or just sort of elusive. Because what I'm really feeling and sensing here is like the 3D paradigms versus 5D paradigms. 3D being everything in the world, physical, tangible, um, work, money, time, um, even just the consistency of a schedule, right? Like time, rituals, routines, versus 5D being um, spirituality, purpose, and connection. So... There's definitely going to be that shift, I think, into the 5D somehow, and there's going to be maybe less energy given to um, the 3D because, again, something here is has reached a level uh, of harmony. You have to recognize that this is now your power, right? That this is your, um, these are your standards. This is what you have to offer. This is how you are of service. Don't discount it, but like, do something with it. <laughs> um, and the way to do that is to connect more deeply to yourself. So that's why this hibernation and this pattern. Why are you in a pattern? Why are you in this pattern of predictability? What are you really trying to achieve? Are you climbing the ladder just to, just to get a new title, to get a raise? 
you know, that's all well and good, kind of. But I, what's showing up here is that you've already achieved some sort of level of success, of power. And yet it's like, it's still dissatisfying. So like, what, connect with your, connect with your inner self, how you feel about what it is that you're doing, what you're aiming for. And, and, and how do you do that with a bit of more intention? Okay. That's what I have for this week. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Let me know in the comments below. Like, share, subscribe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. See you next week.